Hello friends and welcome to Livestream with Restream. I'm your host Anya with Restream team here in Austin, Texas and joining me is Grace with Restream team North America as well. Hi and welcome. Hello everyone. <laughs> so excited super, to be here. Super good to see you guys. Uh, today we have a very special show for you. We are going to talk about live streaming gear and what does that mean for live content creators. What kind of things are essential? What do you have to have if you want to just get started or if you want to level up the quality of your videos? All of that and of course your burning questions answered in real time. So let's get to it. First and foremost, I would like to make sure uh, that we ask you guys a question because we like to know where you guys are watching us from. And we started to play this cool game uh, when we ask you to drop the flag of your country that you're watching from, uh, and we will try to guess what country that is. So this is exciting. Uh, and yeah, that's that's a good little icebreaker and, and starter for us. So let us know which country you're from and put a little flag and we'll try to guess what that is. So we are, um, of course, here in Austin, Texas, which is United States. It's the easy flag to guess, but we would like to see some exciting and uh, unique flags. So let's do it. All right, so live on YouTube and Facebook says UK. And uh, that's uh, that's awesome. 18. Wow. Nice. So it's 6 p.m. for you guys. It's 12 p.m. for us. Exactly yeah. noon. That's when we start. So, yeah. So you didn't drop the flag, but your flag is pretty easy. Yeah. And everyone probably knows how to identify Union Jack. And here comes Rita Citre. Hi, Rita. That's amazing to see you. And here comes your flag. Grace, you want to get a guess? Or because I think I know the answer to this. One. I think I know. I, it would. It, that has to be Austria. <laughs> yes, that is Austria. Awesome. I'm pretty sure that we're right. But Rita, feel free to correct us if we are wrong. Here comes our Union Jack from Martin Schein. Thanks, Martin, for joining. He's joining us from YouTube today. Welcome to the show. Self Buddha. Awesome name. Says friends. And he has a little fairy's wheel. This is cute. Uh, really cool. All right, so here comes uh, a couple, uh, here comes some complicated flags here. So we'll start with this one. Rafael uh, Rodriguez has an interesting flag. Grace, you want to take a guess? I <laughs> because no, I want to say it's I somewhere in no South idea. America, I want to say, but I'm not sure where exactly. This is, is that... an interesting one. Oh, I like the pirate flag, by the way, AV. Thank you for the, thank you for the pirate flag. <laughs> this is awesome. We also have another one right here from, oh, Cobra. We'll call you Cobra. I think this one is, I want to say Iran. Tell me, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go for a run for this one. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go for, oh, um, what, what do you think, Grace? Uh, it, Panama, it maybe? Some... It's got to yeah, be let's South. Let's go for Panama. Let's Say go for Panama. Panama. Yeah. Is that right, Raphael? Uh, Raphael, please correct us, uh, and we will embrace our ignorance. Awesome. <laughs> Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Take sorry. Yes. Us. Sorry. You see, like, this is this is the moment of embarrassment. Like, this is the moment that, you know, you did not know geography. Raphael says, yes. Oh, my God. At least one we did. Yeah. This is amazing. Right. Awesome. So I see um, Carlo is saying Philippines. Awesome. And, of course, Rita is saying, yes, uh, Austria. It's... Uh, ah. Is right <laughs> in German. Amazing. Um, I love that. Uh, yes. And Martin says, AB, uh, their response is awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for this. We have more questions for you coming up. And since we are talking about gear today, the questions that we have for you is also about live streaming gear. So what kind of things you use? And uh, we like to open up this conversation with um, the question of like, what do you believe is the live streaming that is the most essential and most important for live video? So we're here, both Grace and I, sitting in the studio, packed with all kinds of things. We have our mics, we have our lights, we have our cameras and, and whatnot. Uh, but what is, in your opinion, 
the most important and essential one piece of gear that you cannot do without. So imagine you're on a deserted island. You got to go live. What's one thing that you would want to have on you? Let us know in the comments too. And we will also share what's our priorities and what's our list of things that we recommend uh, you definitely have. As a special treat in the end of the show, we are going to be sharing the full list of gear that we have in Austin, Texas. It will have the, the full picture of the studio with every single piece of gear and all the links that you need. So we'll be sharing uh, that with you if you like our setup and would like to consider replicating it. But we'll also answer any questions that you might have about how things connect to Restream Studio and Restream in general. So it's going to be an awesome conversation today. All right, let's look at the chat and see what's going on. Benjamin is saying, thanks for hosting. I'm from Munich. Beautiful, man, uh, Benjamin. Welcome to the show. So Cobra is saying Stream Deck is his most essential and oh, important Oh my gosh. Gear. That, that, that's that a is, good one. I think that's the next thing on my gear list. I, I haven't quite made it to a Stream Deck, but I see it sometimes in the store and I'm like, oh, I want it. So that's a good totally. answer. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's a good one. That's uh, that's more of like a level up thing uh, mm -hmm. to me because I'm also not using uh, Stream Deck just yet. But I do hear you. That's that's really uh, making things easier for you, right? I'm going to actually overlay the chat here because I think that there are a lot of awesome comments that are coming in that I would like everyone to see so folks from different channels could, could see. Um, could see things. All right. So Martin is saying you need an internet connection. Yes. Oh my God, Martin. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Three times. Yes. hundred times. Yes. Internet connection is one of the most important things you want to secure because there's very little room for bad internet in the world of live streaming. So that's yep. a great answer. Really saying good mic. Very important because uh, even though it's counterintuitive, a lot of people actually experience this live stream and many of the live streams that you are doing as a podcast. They have this in an open tab and they're actually doing something else. By the way, kudos in the chat if someone drops the line and says like, I, that's me, like I'm experiencing you as a podcast right now. Then think about replays, people listening to the, the live stream later on. So your audio being crisp and clear is the most important part because your audience will be more forgiving about the quality of your video versus bad audio. Everyone is going to be dropping off. And yeah. a lot of people are saying that. Rafael say, uh, says Mike and has an awesome Mike emoji. And live on uh, YouTube and Facebook says camera is the main thing to use. Well, yep. yeah, in the end of the day, it's live video, right, Grace? Like you want to be yeah. on video. And camera yeah. is needed for that. Absolutely. You need live video. And AV just admitted he, that's me. He's listening to us. He's taking this in as audio only as podcast. And so to your point, I think people will deal with video, but audio has to be crisp and clear. So I, my first step, my first thing that I upgraded was the microphone in my life. Absolutely. And look how many more people, uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dronas, mostly listening while eating at the moment. Bon appetit. I hope you're enjoying that. <laughs> and uh, of course, Carly here is saying, uh, listening while I work out, another great opportunity to, you know, uh, have a good use of your time and connect to your favorite live show. Uh, so Rita here is asking, what is Stream Deck? Uh, Grace, do you want to explain it in, in very brief oh, kind of yeah, terms? Yeah, in a very rough kind of way. Deck? So it, ba ba at the most basic level, it's a panel that you hook into your device and you can um, program quick actions, right? So this camera, this light, this sound effect, and you can program the buttons with anything you want. Please, uh, people that have one, you can, you can, come up with a better explanation than that. But at the most basic level, it is a uh, control panel for your live streaming. And if you are doing live streaming and you're a power live streamer, this really helps your streaming life because it adds all these little shortcuts that you don't have to necessarily uh, do mouse clicks or move things around. It's a good, it's a good way to uh, streamline your process. So that is definitely the next level pro. But here at Restream, we, you know, we have everything you need within the our browser-based studio. So Anya is actually sitting in our Austin office. So she has an actual office with a studio. It's so cool. And I am the picture of you can stream everywhere. I'm in my house because I work remotely. <laughs> and this is and my studio setup is something that, well, this room would be a bedroom, but it's my office. But it's literally a corner in my house, and all around me is chaos. So, um, but see, you have this beautiful setup. You would never know if I hadn't told you, right? <laughs> this is awesome. And I also showed you a little picture of Stream Deck from Elgato, which is one of the probably best products out there um, that 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 uh, exists in terms of stream decks. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool panel that allows you to like remotely control certain things. Uh, we will definitely dive into Grace's point. Like how do you organize your space for live streaming gear when you have a lot to work with or 
just a little to work with because yes, that's exactly a great example right here. Two different people, one person with home office trying to make it work in just the corner of a room and another person who has like a whole room for myself. So I'm very flattered and, and honored to be able to have that. So that's awesome. All right. Uh, we have a lot of awesome comments. And of course, uh, guys, we welcome your questions about live streaming gear and restream or just restream. This is an open two-way street conversation. We are here to answer anything that you would like to know. So don't hesitate to uh, send us any questions in the chat. We'll be answering them as they come in. All right. So uh, listening as we work out, uh, really saying, cool, thank you. This is amazing. And Dr. Dronas is saying, uh, apparently I need to put down the food and start working out. <laughs> you guys, you guys are the best. This is amazing. Uh, all right. Tre uh, Tree Fan Events says, I use Stream Deck with web-based streaming service and I uh, program shortcuts for recalling scenes, banners, layouts, etc. This is really awesome. This is uh, why a lot of people choose to use Stream Deck. We do also, uh, in Restream Studio, if that's your platform of choice, offer some shortcuts that are connecting to your keyboard. And I'm going to show you real quick just by sharing my screen. And I will temporarily remove chat overlay because there's kind of a little bit too much going on here. Uh, so here is how our settings are going to look like now. And see how you have your general settings, your video, your audio. That's where you will be selecting your favorite gear, right? Like your cameras, your audio. Uh, your mics and your headphones. And here is another section that we have, which is shortcuts. So that's actually a simplified version of Stream Deck where you can select your um, specific controls, such as like go live in one button. Like you can mute your microphone or uh, turn off your camera. And of course, there are certain shortcuts for your layouts and um, open private chats or go full screen. So check this out. This is relatively new and um, it might not be a full substitution for a live stream deck for everyone, but it's a pretty good start for people who are just trying to figure out how it feels to use your keyboard and get shortcuts when you do certain repetitive actions when you're live streaming. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So many, many good comments here. Let's see. Uh, Benjamin is saying... Um, Oh, I'm using a lot of gear. I hear you. <laughs> Sony Alpha 6400, Broad, uh, Roadcaster Pro, and Shure SM7B. So those two are, I believe, our microphones, which is awesome. So if you have uh, a podcasting type events or if you just need two microphones because you have two co-hosts, that's a really cool setup. I do mm -hmm. use one microphone, but my Focusrite um, interface actually allows for two. So hopefully when pandemic is finally over for good and forever, we might be having real guests here in the studio. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. So, right. Uh, not related to restream question, but I think we definitely should address that since we're playing the flag <laughs> game all the time. Question, how do you find the flags via the chat? So you're just using your emoji, um, just your typical emoji thing in, in the chat, uh, whichever platform you're using. If you're on Mac, control command space is going to open up the um, emoji setup for you. Um, and you can also find online like the list of like emoji codes. Uh, and yeah, you just uh, put put in the, you start putting in the country name and the flag is going to appear. Uh, for a PC, it? it's the Windows button and then the period, and you click those at the same time, and that'll bring up the same thing as in Mac with the control. Is it control command space bar or is it control? I do it automatically. I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, I think I think it's either option command space or control command space. So on the two, try both. Yeah. If you don't see the flags, let us know. We'll <laughs> uh, we'll remedy that. Awesome. So Martin is mentioning a lot of things about uh, microphone and audio, kind of like very in sync with what we were talking about earlier. We should point out here, audio is actually more important than video. So a good external microphone is essential, 100%. Like we just saw earlier, a lot of people are experiencing us as a podcast. A lot of people will replay us as audio only. Good audio is essential. People will put up with choppy video, a little bit of frame drops, unless it's completely unwatchable. People will be forgiving but they will not be forgiving to bad sound. So that's really, really good point. Uh, and Martin continues, uh, but if audio is bad, even with an awesome picture, people will just switch off because they often have no idea what is happening just from someone to, uh, talking to camera. Exactly. And then your captions are probably not going to work if you're using yeah. ad platform captioning because the captions cannot hear you. So they will just be like, we don't know what's going on. So lots of benefits of uh, investing in audio early on. 
Can I add a tip here with with all this talk about audio? Yes. So I yes, produce a, a, li- a weekly live show. And so we have trained ourselves because we also distribute it as a podcast. And so we've trained ourselves to talk about things on video as if someone is just listening to us. And so if we're showing something on screen, we'll say, hey, describe that for us. Or we'll just casually say, oh, as you see here, we've got this different layout. We've got chat coming, chat overlay coming up on the right side of our screen. And so it is a good idea and a good practice as you're going live to also talk about things as if someone isn't seeing them. Yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of people will be experiencing it like that. And that's also great for repurposing because in the future, you can always be like, oh, I can just, if you're using tools like Descript and you're actually transcribing your uh, video into audio, you can always remember the cues that you gave yourself and something that you mentioned, some words that you said, and then you can just control and search for those specific words. And you're right in the same place where you want to use, which you want to use for for a clip or a little repurposing element, which is amazing. Um, I use Mac says live on YouTube. That is good. Um, Paul is saying note live stream quality is overall quality of the stream and video quality is pertaining to the camera video quality. That's for settings. Paul, thanks for the reminder. Paul is here with us on Restream team in customer success. Thank you guys for your service. You are amazing. You are there for customers whenever they need you. Um, we have a question of about Instagram self boot is asking how to stream on LinkedIn and Instagram so I have I have good news and not so good news for you self Buddha uh, the LinkedIn part is very easy uh, you actually do need to be approved for streaming on, on on LinkedIn so you have to apply and they have to approve it uh, the good news is that with uh, tools like restream you actually can get auto approved uh, Basically, by connecting your LinkedIn channel, you just follow the prompts and um, LinkedIn will be able to immediately check your channel and decide if if they're going to approve you for live streaming. If they don't approve you right away, just wait for 14 days, uh, create a little bit more content, create a more compelling case of why you want to access live streaming, and then apply again through LinkedIn platform. Uh, But with Instagram, uh, there is a workaround on how you can connect Instagram to Restream. It's called Yellow Duck. You can find some information about them online. Uh, It's a third-party application. It's not part of Restream ecosystem of tools, uh, but it allows you to basically trick Instagram into thinking that your computer is your phone. Note that Instagram in general does not want you to go live in any other way except for directly from your phone. So by doing the workaround, you're kind of you're kind of doing a little detour. So it might not always work for you and Instagram might not like it. So as of right now, we recommend considering not streaming to Instagram. Uh, because, like I said, their their rules just don't allow that. The moment Instagram allows uh, multi-streaming and third-party applications will be the first one to bring it over to you. So keep asking us, keep asking Instagram to allow that, and hopefully we will make it happen. Uh, Benjamin has a cool question. How spontaneous are you, Anya? I could join the stream. Uh, I'm in my studio currently. Well, that's an interesting one. Uh, so, yeah, so... Um, I'm assuming that Benjamin is referring to like restream pairs, which is something that we uh, released recently that allows your guests to join the stream and also connect their channels. That is something that we will be uh, talking about more later this year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yes, like, so if you want to invite the community uh, and the people who are watching your stream into the stream, you can always share a guest link and then let people come in. So not super spontaneous on this specific stream, Benjamin, but there are more streams that I'll be doing where I might consider just dropping the guest link in and just pull people in, like, you know, old Why style not? radio show. Talk to, our, talk to our customers, right? Talk to e- them directly. Exactly. Exactly. We got, a, we got a cool question here from Dr. Drones. He's asking asking how we're pulling in the questions on the screen of the lower banner. Yeah, uh, great, great question. I am going to demo you exactly what's going on and so you can see it. So I'm going to open and apologies for, oh, I'll have to probably again remove all the things here. Uh, so here's my chat, right? Like I, as a host, see like all of your comments and this is the chat overlay, like the one that I had to turn on. So this gets a little bit more attention. So the moment I click on any chat message, just like I clicked on yours, it appears right here. Also in graphics section, I can customize the way it appears. I can make it round and I can make it kind of like shorter and wider. So the name appears first in the question later. I personally really like this full take over lower yes. third version because I think it's big, it's screaming, it's all up in your face. So that's my preference, but this is how you do it. And that is something that you'll need to be doing in Restream Studio. One of the greatest reasons to use our studio over other alternative encoders. 
Awesome. Great question. I love it. Let's bring that chat overlay back and see what else people are saying. What is our next question, Grace? I'm scrolling through. To, we've got a lot of questions here. People giving us suggestions on um, on office on other gear. So um, here is um, life on YouTube and Facebook. So, or it says I use Restream by OBS Studio, so I can make sure the video matches the audio, and I get the right video. Audio is off. Off sync is two hundred. Awesome. So you know that's awesome. Yeah, and with with Restream, you can use encoders like. Uh, OBS and have uh, all those graphic features and still get the power of multi-streaming and distributing it to all of these really cool places, multiple Facebooks, multiple YouTubes, LinkedIn, and then with pairs even paired all of your uh, guest channels. So you get the power of the multi-streaming and you get some more, I guess, creativity with graphics. I am not an OBS user because I just like being in the studio. I think it has everything that I need for what I'm doing, but maybe one day I'll level up just like you. Yeah, um, absolutely. I also like Martin's comments here. He is um, he is talking about uh, how it is a good idea to have a second digital device other than your own so you can see uh, if live streaming is working. So you can have a quick check if you are live. Uh, you can see exactly what viewers can see and be confident all the tech is working uh when you are on air. Yes, so there are several ways how you can solve it. One is, a, a, is exactly what Martin is saying, additional device where you can just kind of open the, the platforms and, and see exactly what your viewers see. You can also have a co-producer or a little helper who would like check things for you. We actually have a teammate who joins us before we go live, he checks the sound, makes sure that we sound good. And then when we go live, he like waves me and says, you're live. YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, you guys are good. Uh, also, I would like to show you right here. And again, my infinity loop is going to distract everybody. Uh, but notice how right here in this area, in this section, uh, I also have my view count as a host, right? Like I can see the channels that I connected and it shows me how many people are watching on each of those channels. So that's a cool little thing that uh, only I can see because my my audience obviously doesn't see it, uh, but I can always kind of check. And even if this, if, if it says zero views, because not all platforms do share uh, the accurate view count with us in real time, you can at least see that the line is there. So that means that the stream is probably going on that platform. Um, and of course, our um, uh, full screen mode is available if you just click uh, your F button when you're, in, when you're in studio. What that will do is it will get rid of all the unnecessary noise and just put you and your guests, just the video part, uh, on your full screen and you will have exactly the same view as your guests have, um, I mean, as, as your viewers and your audience. So this is awesome. All right. So Martin let's has see. a question too about so, uh, how long do you know that the live stream has been on so you can keep the desired duration. So in the studio that when, when Anya demonstrated to you, the next to where you can see the audience is a clock where it tells you exactly how long you've been live streaming. So for us, it's been 23 minutes and 18, 19 seconds. So you can keep track of that. And it's also a good idea to pace yourself. When I do a show plan, I try to make it like 10 minutes this, five minutes that to just make sure that we stay on track. But that timer is there running for as long as you're live. Yeah, awesome. Good questions here. And guys, if we missed any of your questions that you asked earlier, uh, please feel free to repeat it again because we're kind of like scrolling through things uh, and trying to pick the the ones that we want to answer next. But feel free to to kind of like reiterate your point if you need to. So there is a question right here. Not sure if it's been asked already, but I live stream on all social media platforms. Uh, to this point, I have not been able to see any Twitter comments, any suggestions. Uh, so I am going to actually test it right now and see, like, because we are going live on Twitter. Uh, I did connect my uh, my Twitter channels to this. It might be due to uh, relatively new API integration, because as you remember, Twitter used to be Periscope, then that changed to Twitter Live, and then we <laughs> integrated with that. But since it's a new thing, it might have little quirks here and there. So there are two things that you could do. You could test it whenever you go live on Twitter, and I'm about to do that too um, in just a minute here. 
And also you can reach out to our support team and ask them to diagnose your specific setup in your specific channels. They'll be happy to jump on the in the chat with you and like do a little test. And if they see something on the back end, on, on restream end, they'll be able to diagnose and hopefully troubleshoot it for you. So two things to do, test it yourself, reach out to our 27 real human support, and hopefully that is going to resolve it. Uh, Grace, feel free to pick the next question as I go oh. and head up to our Twitter and send us a little message to see if it's going to pop up. Well, this is an interesting question. And, and I love that this was asked of us because uh, Hard Boiled English with Teacher Paul says, is it possible to become sponsored by Restream in some way? And the answer is yes, we have an amazing affiliate program. So I will, I can drop the link to that into chat. And that is, and there's a ton of great opportunities, great perks with it. I know that it's a, a lifetime commission. Lawson, who who runs our affiliate program, is trying to listen to this and be like, oh my gosh, Grace, ah, you know, like you're not doing it justice. <laughs> but it is quite amazing. So I'll drop, drop that link in the chat. And it's a great way that if you uh, love Restream, it's a good way to share the love of Restream with other streamers. I'm glad you yeah, asked that. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's a good question. And definitely, uh, we, um, if you, if you want like a, the quickest way to find that, uh, affiliate program is to actually go on restream.io and then look to your left and there's like a little gift or present looking icon. And if you click on that, it's going to show you a little bit more information about the, the program and your referral link that you can share with, uh, with anybody. And then, uh, the people who you're sharing that with can, uh, sign up for a stream using your link and then you get your bonuses, which we pay in cash via PayPal. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool. We have some sad news on the Twitter front. Paul and Sean, who are both on our amazing support team, just confirmed that the Twitter API is not exposing any chats, any platforms yet. This is no doubt having to do with their transition from Periscope to Twitter Live. And so they're still working on that. But as soon as it is available to users, you will be able to get it through Restream. I promise. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Good, uh, good, good call, Paul. Thanks for, for uh, joining. And I see Sean is also saying, love, Paul, you are right. That is good. Yeah. So um, I, I was just testing that and it's, it kind of doesn't look like there's an easy way to even like chat in Twitter right now. So that was, um, that was my kind of like little test right now. Uh, so Twitter kind of allows you to comment. So you can put like a comment like you would in YouTube, for example, but it doesn't really have like a live running chat there. So they're working on it. As soon as they're ready, we will be too. Amazing. So uh, more great questions here. Bobby is asking, can you live stream YouTube through Restream? And if you play copyright music, will the live stream be taken down? Uh, so can you stream YouTube through Restream? I, I would say you can stream anything from Restream to YouTube as well as 30 other platforms um, and social destinations that you can choose from. So you can definitely stream your content on YouTube via Restream, even if it's just the only destination as well as if it's part of multiple ones. When it comes to copyright music, uh, Restream does not have any copyright blocks or, or strikes, but uh, Restream encourages you to follow the uh, rules of end platform. So if you are using music that's copyrighted on YouTube, YouTube will likely take the stream down or give you a strike or remove the piece of content that has music on it because that's their policy. You have to have rights to play music. Uh, you can play your original music or you can use one of the companies that allow you to get licenses for, for the music. But yes, copyrighted music will likely be removed on YouTube and Facebook operates very similarly. I believe that Twitch does have some workaround for gamers um, and DJs. Uh, so I would recommend to kind of like diving into their terms of service. So on Restream end, there is there is no copyright issues, but the end platforms are the ones that we recommend you to check in and follow the rules. So generally, the, the rule of thumb is most likely if you don't own the rights of the music, you will likely get blocked. So, uh, so use and, that with caution. Yeah. And on the YouTube side, they usually flag you and alert you and they let you know what they even tell you what exactly the music is and how you can change it and then uh, and then what countries it's flagged in because of course every country has different copyright rules around copyright copyright copywritten music copyright music okay i'm awesome. going to stop <laughs> awesome. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, great question here. Uh, also from I have a voice. Good name. I love it. Can you do keynote presentations through Restream yes. Studio and how to do that? Yes, you absolutely can. So when you choose to share your screen, um, you have options. You can share your entire screen. You can share a specific window. 
a Chrome tab or an application. So if you have your keynote presentation, you can choose to share that. And then you have multiple different layouts that you can play with. I'll just show and demonstrate a couple for you. So this is one. And imagine I am a deck, I'm a presentation, and Grace is the one presenting. There's also this guy right here uh, where he can be kind of like a little under it. You can also be uh, picture in picture. And for that, I will have to remove the question so you can see her teeny tiny right here. And uh, of course, you can just be by, side by side with your presentation. At, at any point of time, you can maximize either yourself or your deck. So I'm the deck. And um, yeah, so that's how you can do that. And uh, the only thing to consider is that if you have any music or audio in your presentation, that might not play through uh, Restream because Restream would not be able to access the audio from your from your presentation deck. If that's part of your of your experience, I recommend uploading the video either through our video clips or local video sources and just like play it like that. Uh, or you can also have it uploaded on YouTube and open a tab. If you're opening a separate uh, Chrome tab and check the box that says show audio, then you can actually play the audio from a separate tab in Restream Studio, but it might not play from your keynote. So definitely give it a good test and see how that works and consider uh, having your audio video materials uh, separated from, from the deck in Keynote. We have I some that. I think we have some great questions. I'm going to go through these very quickly yeah. in rapid fire. So we've got one that says the Restream Studio music is good to go through, right? Yes. So in case you didn't know, Restream Studio does offer background music. It is um, copyright play. is playable. Um, it is completely free for you to use. It is protected. I think it's music where it's in a loop where you're never hearing the same sound twice as whatever. Sometimes I listen to it while I'm working because it's such chill music. So I have the down tempo here. So let's let's see how that would go. Yeah. So it's cool to have the background music playing when you're when you go live. So yes, that is absolutely protected. You could absolutely go live with it on on all the channels. Um, Oh, he's yeah. having a little we're gonna keep it. here. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. Yeah, we're going to keep it. People ask about, about background music. They're going to get background music. Here we go. Yes, absolutely. Uh, already included with Restream. If you are curious how to find it, Oops. real quick here, you will go to this little plus sign. You will select the background music option. Once you do that, you select the genre of choice. And then if it's kind of too loud, like it is for us now, you can always turn it down and it becomes more background. If you want to blast it, do it, go 120%. So that's your background music option. I love All right. it. And, and we'll keep it because... It's cool. <laughs> because it's cool, exactly. Awesome. There's so, another great yeah. question here. Let me see if I, let me see if it pulls up. So, oops. Okay, well, this wasn't a one. How do you do Bible verses in Restream Studio? So there is an option to do captions, and I will see if I can share my screen that we're in right now. Share. It'll share. Um, and I'll just do this maximize, and I'll hide your comment here. So minimize distraction. And so you go here to where it says captions, and then you can load here up to 300 different captions. So we have some get to know your audience. I have drop your questions in the chat. So these are ones that I've used in the past, but you can put any text here. And so you see here, we have our question of how do you do live streaming gear? So we're going to show you and it just pops up on screen. So you can put any text there that you would like, including Bible verses, if that's what you want to show. And then the other question awesome. I want to pull up too is, let me see. Oh, so many good questions. Um, there was one. Oh, this is good. So how can you share your live stream to other social media with Restream? Well, that is what we do. So we'll show you how to set up the destinations here. Um, I don't want to mess up our stream. So I'm going to go to a different screen that I have for, uh, for, for demonstrating things. So let me pull that up for you. So here, this is the Restream Studio. So when you log on to Restream, sign up for it. This is the studio. So all of your upcoming events will go here. And then you could stream with the studio, stream with the OBS or vMix or add a video file. But for this question, I'm going to just go stream to studio. So that would take us right into the studio. It just takes a little bit. And then here you can add de your destinations here. Oops. Sorry. 
so you can edit destinations here and then you would just add your destinations and you can go live to any of these different platforms and with our paid plans you could go to multiple facebook pages and groups you can go to multiple youtube accounts you can go to multiple twitter accounts unfortunately you can only go to one linkedin account that is tied to your account but that's fine and then any of these other 30 platforms. So you would just go here and follow the process, connect your Facebook, and it'll take you through, uh, you know, some, you know, chat features of just how to log in. And then that is how you would add multiple destinations to your stream. Awesome. Good stuff. Gosh, I found so many amazing questions here. Uh, let's take this one from Martin. He says, if you do use Restream, it is a good idea to upload a video as a standby by emergency option in case something unexpected happens and you need to take a break while sorting any tech issues out. So yes, there are two things you can use for that. One is your guest or your co-host or your co-producer. If you have another person there and you need a moment, you get a sip of like a little, a little bit of water or you need to like adjust something, you can always use our maximize feature, maximize grace. And then even though you can still hear me, I can still talk, I can adjust little things here and there. Or exactly like Martin says, you can have a video that you can use as an uh, outro, or I guess that's gonna be like a mid, mid roll video, right? Like a little, 30 second thing that kind of talks a little bit about you, maybe the topic that you're talking about. And that gives a little kind of natural break between like the two talking heads or the demonstration of the product or the presentation. Uh, and it also gives you a little moment to like breathe in or fix something that urgently needs to be fixed. Two ways to do it, either through video source, which you can upload directly from your computer and then maximize, or through video clips is the video, if the video is small uh, and huge in size. Great point, Martin, I love that. And there was also one a comment that I really wanted to highlight big time. Paul from Shopify is saying, we love music to set the mood for our webinars and sometimes keep it at a low level just to keep energy up. That is amazing. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. But the big moment here is that Paul for the longest time was showing up as LinkedIn user in our live streams. And now finally, whatever you did, Paul, with your settings, please DM me about that because a lot of people were asking me about how do you not be a LinkedIn user and become uh, a real person, right? And you somehow did it. So let me know how, how that happened. And welcome, Paul, to to the show and uh, with, with your name and your, and your image, finally. Good to see you. All right, so many awesome questions. Oh my God, what do we pick? <laughs> oh, right. so this was a reply to a comment. It was, um, uh, remember to mention RTMP option for streaming to any platform that's not mentioned and you have to have the RTMP ingest function. So yes, you do. You can connect other platforms that are not natively supported with the RTMP. So for instance, this is where you would uh, tie in that Instagram live hack that we came up with or for with Yellow Duck or to do uh, to go live to Amazon live, which is um, native to the, which they haven't opened up to multi-streaming platforms yet so you would use that rtmp function to go live to those additional destinations so thank you very much for mentioning that as well martin awesome great question here from bobby uh what is the difference between uh, when streaming on restream or using a webcam or an ios device and use rtmp with Prism Live Studio. So I'm not super familiar with Prism Live Studio. I'm assuming that's another um, another platform that allows you to uh, basically capture your video and stream it on social platforms. So I'm not sure if they um, allow you to add multiple social channels, either multi-streaming or not. So that would be one of the big differences because Restream supports up to 30 different platforms and destinations, including the destinations within the same platform. So we currently are live on a couple of Facebook profiles, Facebook page of Restream, as well as our Restream community. Welcome all the community members, by the way, if you're watching us right now. So that's pretty powerful. In addition to that, you of course have your YouTube, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Twitch, and many other local regional platforms, like there were mentions of Billy Billy earlier in the chat. Uh, so, so that's one big difference. Another thing is that uh, Restream Studio is kind of like a full, full stack uh, show production area right like you have your chats that you can uh, pull in and highlight like we're doing you can do the overlay for your chats you can add graphics you can add captions you can have guests up to 10 guests actually on the screen at the same time and one of the other unique differentiator uh, features that we like to talk about is restream pairs so your guests uh, that you invite to join you in the show can also connect their own social channels so their audiences and fans can join your conversation and your live stream and multiply your reach uh, 
whenever you go live. So those are like some differences. Uh, and again, like I said, apologies for not being super familiar with Prism, but I believe that Restream is one of the most powerful web-based web uh, browser tools. And it's definitely uh, more, um, more powerful and engaging for your community compared to just going live on one single platform using their own live video solution. And uh, this is awesome. Uh, so I see that there's some comments on that. So Chantal is saying, I've used Restream with Prism Live in combination for three years. That's awesome. So it does sound like it's some kind of like an encoder uh, solution that just like captures your video and then you connect it to Restream just like you would uh, with OBS or Ecamm. So that's good to hear that's working out. That's awesome. And um, yeah. So more comments on uh, on Prism and Restream and how to work uh, them together. That is super helpful. And there was also a comment earlier that I really wanted to address as we... Uh, yeah, here it is. It's actually also from Chantal. She says, love the studio setup. That is awesome because we are about to share uh, the full list of gear and like how Restream Austin Studio setup is, is done, how it works. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and drop the link in the chat. So that's just for your future reference. It might not go on all the channels, but um, I, I just shared it and I will come back and share it in, um, in the comments to every single video that we made. And I'm also going to share uh, my screen real quick so everyone can see. Okay maximize my friend awesome so yeah so this is our uh austin studio equipment doc uh which conveniently has all the gear links so if you want to look at the specific microphones and specific audio interface or cameras that we have we have them all linked to the website where you can purchase them sometimes it's the manufacturer uh sometimes it's just simply amazon because it's just so easy right so you can see here a picture and that actually is a pretty interesting look from behind what's going on in my world right like so it's me and like everything that i see i see the beautiful view of downtown austin and then it basically shows exactly how we set things up like where is our camera on the tripod this is my laptop and restream studio in it everything including uh, my headphones and restream coffee essential essential element <laughs> of any stream um and we of course have a very detailed list of how exactly we set it up like why we chose that lighting why we put it in the way we put it and of course the same goes for audio video network connection recommendations and some miscellaneous things such as USB-C docs that we are using so this is for you and we are hoping that you will find this helpful because a lot of people ask us about the gear and we want to make sure we empower you uh, with the knowledge so your streams could look great uh, remember that this gear list that we have is more for advanced Mm -hmm. production right like we have a dslr camera we have two rather expensive lights a microphone that connects to audio interface when you're just starting you don't need to have all of those things you'll be perfectly fine with just a regular webcam plug and play usb microphone and maybe one simple ring light but in terms of the preference uh we talked a lot about how audio is the most important here we talked about how camera is your next most important thing and of course the light is going to make any camera look much better and your image is going to appear much more clear if you have a well-lit space um so yeah so coming back to to the chat i see some people are happy to see our setup amazing thanks that's awesome and um uh, another question about Instagram. We definitely should drop the link to our um, article about how like you could work around with Yellow Duck, but generally Instagram does not want you to go live direct from third-party applications. They only want you to go live from your phone. So we recommend you let Instagram know that restreaming to it will be very convenient and hopefully they'll make the change. And as soon as they're ready, we'll be ready for you as well. And uh, uh that is really cool. <laughs> Martin is hilarious. He's saying, lol, you forgot to mention all the important book uh, that you uh, recommend placing under a laptop. That's really funny because that's a little workaround to like elevate my laptop when I'm streaming. And uh, we are looking for like a proper stand for the laptop, but temporarily, you know what? Being scrappy is good. So like that's, that's our temporary solution. This is really, really fun. Uh, amazing says Chantal and Paul right here is saying, um, love this. Thank you for the share. I just created a similar system set up with links and details for my teams. They wanted to know what I use and why. Also soon uh, have my Restream mugs, which will make the setup perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Restream coffee. Yes. That is awesome. 
That yeah. is so good to hear. Absolutely. And I see, I see Grace dropped the link to our support article about how to go live on Instagram, which shows you the workaround with Yellow Duck. Beautiful, beautiful. Also, awesome. Grace, I, I would like to pass the microphone to you so you could share a little bit of tips uh, on <laughs> how to organize a studio in a small space because it's a big pain point. A lot of people yeah. look at this studio, you know, like Paul, uh, he's with Shopify, like we're here with Restream. We do have space for creating this extravaganza, right? Like, and mm -hmm. even uh, I like to share this story. Like I started with just a small USB mic and Logitech web camera and my yeah. light was the window. Like I live in Austin, Texas, so the sun was never a problem. Yeah. And then eventually, gradually, we started to, uh, to work up to our more sophisticated and professional video studio. But when you are at home in the smaller space like Grace, what mm -hmm. are your tips to look good and awesome on camera? What is the gear that you need to look into? Well, I have the same setup as Anya basically, but it's just in a smaller space in my office. So you want to make sure the background behind you is not distracting. So I have these bookcases and I have some, you know, little tchotchkes or whatever in there, but there's nothing distracting. There's nothing incredibly personal up here necessarily other, other than the books that I recommend. Right. So, um, so you can see that there, but it's, it's just a nice, not distracting background, right? I have a Sony, uh, ZV1, uh, mirrorless DSL camera, and it is actually on a uh, stand that's a, um, something that's attached to my desk. So it is on a clamp on a stand. So it's off my desk and then I can just move it up and down. I just have a basic desk set up here in the corner of my house with, with uh, like a basic Ikea desk. And then I also have an Elgato key light here, but then I also have this like smaller light here. I won't blind you with it, but I'll just show you the back of it. So I have this here like lighting me on the side, but without all of this stuff, I just have a window. And fortunately I'm in Dallas, Texas, same sunlight. So I get a nice, clear, natural light uh, from there. Now I started off streaming. With, oh, and this is a microphone. It's, um, it's an AT2020, just something basic. I got off Amazon. It was before the pandemic, so it wasn't really that expensive, but it's the same mic that I've used and I have it on a clamp so I can just move it in and out of the way. So if I'm doing, um, so if I'm doing dusky things, I can just move it to the side. And so that's something fairly simple that I found. So everything is just clamped to my desk to maintain a standard office space. But I started off with base, a basic PC. You know, you need to have a strong uh, computer or laptop to, whether it's a Mac or a PC to start off with. And I just had a basic Logitech webcam that was attached to the top of it. And it's the same thing I used for Zoom meetings, for talking to people, all that stuff. And then I just recently upgraded to the DSLR. So you don't have to get super fancy. The gear that you have, and whatever, whatever gear you have is what you need to get started. And I definitely recommend just getting started because the more comfortable you are, talking to the camera and directly at the camera rather than looking at the screen, the more comfortable you are being extemporaneous on camera, taking comments, interacting with people, the better your live stream is going to be. Absolutely, totally. And I have to say that uh, when I upgraded my camera from uh, just a regular USB Logitech to a DSLR, it did massively elevate the quality of my video. And I chose Canon uh, and Camlink uh, from Elgato because I felt like, so the, the gear that Grace is using is connecting to the laptop through uh, the interface, right? Like so, through yep. the driver, through the program that you have to download. And then you basically set up the camera and that's how it works. I'm much more of like, give me a cable to plug in type person. So that's why I went with the camera that has a cable and then um, an output that allows to uh, connect it uh, through Camlink and basically trick your computer into thinking that that's a USB camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really cool and powerful because uh, of course we can like zoom it in and get this like really nice and blurry background that's actually pretty far. So like if I go, like you'll see like it's really not uh, <laughs> not that close to me, but because it's zoomed on me, it looks pretty cool. Uh, and um, yeah, and I can also see myself in a small little window that my camera shows up so I can look at the camera, look at the computer and you know, like make it all work together. But yeah, there's definitely lots of options out there. Just make sure that it has a, the opportunity to either connect it through Camlink and basically plug it in through USB into your laptop, or it has some way to connect to your computer through, uh, through some kind of a program. So Anya, that let's is, talk about audio input. So you have those amazing, super cool headphones that you have. And I have something else that I'm using when I go live. They're just these, uh, wireless um invisible um 
headsets that just go in my ears and go underneath basically my, yeah. my ears. And so, and I am Anya's wireless because she is much more daring than I am. I am hardwired because I have to stay tethered to my computer and I'm really paranoid about wireless going off the rails when I go live. So for that extra added level of security, I am actually plugged into my focus right directly and have these wow. headphones directly into my ears because uh, one, it also, uh, well, when I first started streaming, I'll admit this to all of you, it also kept me from wandering off. <laughs> off camera and so like being tethered to my but for me it's an added level of security but you can go either way you can look super cool like Anya or super nerdy and tethered like me so <laughs> yeah and I get it I totally get it like get me wired because that's how I feel about like a lot of gear including the microphone but yeah the the headphones I, th I believe I got them for Christmas from actually from the company last year and it kind of became part of my body like I'm on, yeah. on my pictures I'm wearing them and like people are just like do you even like have uh, life outside of your AirPods Max. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. And they're great in tuning everything off. So for me, this, the sound cancellation is very important mm -hmm. because when I'm in the tune, in the zone, I don't want any distractions. So that was really helpful uh, for, for me. But that's, that's definitely, that's some good stuff. And another thing about the wireless uh, potentially being a little moody, uh, one very important thing that I recommend people do before they go live is they reboot their computer. Like that's the yep. first thing I do uh, five, 10 minutes before I get into the preview of my stream, just turn everything off, reboot, make sure nothing is running on the background. The little Zoom meeting that got left over, that little Spotify thing that you were listening to and jamming for, turn it all off. And even if you think you're closing and quitting, you might not necessarily be doing that effectively. It's just reboot it give it a fresh start. And then after that, if your wireless device is connected, they will likely stay connected unless you mess with them. So that has been my experience so far. Some more cool questions here that I would love to take care of. So sure. a hard boiled English. Who is teacher Paul? This is amazing. Asking, so sorry to be repetitive. I have tried to, uh, streaming to Billy Billy. Has anyone succeeded in doing this? Billy Billy will not allow me to do so. I have some audience in China, but can't reach them. Yeah, that's uh, Billy Billy is one of the platforms that I believe Restream is integrated with. But to the best of my knowledge, and Paul and guys uh, in support, if you're still listening to us, feel free to jump in and comment. I believe that there might be some kind of a uh, approval process for them, or there might be some kind of like a VPN related thing there. So that's definitely a great question for our customer support and see if they have recommendations in terms of either getting approved uh, or um, any kind of workaround that they can recommend to your setup and a VPN that will allow you to finally access that audience. Uh, there are several other platforms that are also primarily catering to uh, Asian market that we're integrated with. One of them is Africa TV, I believe, and there are several others. So I recommend also checking those out and see if that would work for your audience in China. Uh, and yeah, but the first thing would be to, rec to reach out to our support and see if there is any troubleshooting that they can offer right away because it shouldn't be happening. We're integrated with them, so it should work. Right. Uh, Martin has a really cool one here. Good advice for live streaming is try not to use a green screen for live and instead have a real background like this ladies in the stream. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, green screens are interesting and they and they can offer you a lot of interesting things if you have a really massive background or if you want something uh, really cool uh, virtual going on there. But in the end of the day, even the best green screen and the best green screen solution is still going to be you, you can see and you can tell that it's not a real background and things get lost, especially things like my headphones in Zoom meetings when I have virtual background ground, they disappear, they yep. fall off partially. So all of that is happening. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. But maybe, um, maybe investing, just kind of thinking through your, your real background is something that would make your streams more look more natural. So we definitely are uh, on the real background camp of things. And it's just right. simple, right? I just stand in front of my bookcases and it's, it's all simple. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a way to set up an account with Restream so different people can use it at church for different things? Says Lester uh, Buckley. Uh, so it's coming soon. The answer, the short answer is it's coming soon. We are working on our team accounts that will give you the opportunity to assign different seats and roles within the Restream um, account. And uh, as soon as it's going to be ready, we'll let you know. We are hoping to release that this year. So stay tuned for that and keep an eye on our emails and social media. That's where we'll be announcing that stuff. 
Amazing. But this is a common request. So you are not alone, Lester. There are a lot of people within organizations, churches. We have a lot of, we work with a lot of different churches, a lot of different companies that are also requesting this. So yes, we hear you. And it is, I've seen it on the roadmap. I've seen it. I've seen it there. It's coming. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Awesome. Another Martin's comment on the wireless devices, unless it's absolutely necessarily leave wireless alone (laughs) because if device has no cable then the wireless connection is another unnecessary thing that could fail during live stream even try to use wi-fi internet um instead um i guess i guess that's where where it kind of ends uh but yes so that's another thing that we recommend you do uh if you want to improve the quality of your live streams and get rid of any frame drops any little hiccups uh, get wired, get your Ethernet cable connected versus being on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is just by nature a little bit more unstable. It depends on how many people are using that. It depends on how many other devices are interfering. Someone is coming in with their cell phone, trying to connect to that Wi-Fi. That all is disturbance in the force. So if you have if you have your internet wired, you just have a better chance to have a smooth stream. Great advice and good point. Paul from LinkedIn. Uh, says, I always believe in backups. I am wireless like I am, but my wire is always closed just in case. Yes, that's a okay. good one. Um, Paul, you will be you will be amused by how many other pairs of headphones are around me right now. The closest ones I have are like right here. So at any point, if anything goes wrong, I switch headphones and they're all around me. Like I even have another pair of these headphones because, uh, yeah, I, I, I walk off without these because they aren't completely perfect at keeping me tethered to my desk. And so like, I know one day I'm going to get one big tug and I'm going to have to like replace these. So yes, always have backups. Awesome. So as a final part of this conversation, I would like to offer you guys um, an, an opportunity to win something, like a little giveaway, but it's going to be, it's, it's, a, it's not going to be the typical one that we do um, just like live is here. I would like to invite you guys to comment under wherever you're watching this stream, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, to comment in the comments after the stream and share one story of yours of epic gear fail. And I'm going to put this this caption here uh, as epic gear fail story contest because i'm sure all of us have at least one of those yes. right so yes. i invite you to please share one uh it could be funny it could be really scary it could be really tragic it could be a little bit of everything but i invite you to please share one and i will actually share mine as well most likely on linkedin and the facebook community uh, so, so you guys like hear that nothing, nothing is ever perfect, even if you're restream. Uh, but I would like to hear and like read those stories, and then we will pick the best story and send them, of course, a restream mag. And on top of that, we'll also give you a restream professional plan for a year. So that's a pretty big price for writing up your uh, your story. So let's uh, let's see how how that works out. So please uh, please share on. We will let you do that for this whole week, and we will pick the winners uh, by uh, like after the weekend and announce them on Monday. We'll reach out to you through the social platforms that you chose to share your story on, and uh, yeah, and let let the best one win. And may, may the odds be in your favor. That is awesome. So, oh, uh, Martin had this question about the Facebook comment. Um, let me see awesome. if it'll come up. So, so he said that there is, um, he, he had the comment in full on Facebook and then it just cut off on the screen. I think that's the limitation of the caption feature. Like it, it does only allow for a certain number of characters. And so that is the limitation, but we see your comments in full force on our end. And we also see it in full force on Facebook. So that's just Absolutely. an issue with the cap with the captioning, you know. So, um, but normally yeah. it's not a problem because I could actually see your whole comment here on the chat and read it all out. So even though it doesn't show up on screen, so you're cool, Martin. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a limitation of like how much space we have here, because if we keep writing, for example, if someone decided to share their epic fail story right now in the chat, in the comment, right, that story would basically like fill the whole screen and then there will be no Grace, no Anya. And it, and, and that's why there is a limitation after which uh, the lower third just kind of runs out of space. Uh, but thanks for pointing that out. That's actually an interesting thing to to see if we can like give you a little hint through through the user interface like hey this might not show up as a um as a comment because it's a little bit too long amazing 
Beautiful. So there are already some ideas about the epic fail stories. There is uh, epic fail, no sound for four hours stream on next setup, LOL. Oh, Make no. sure you, you add it as a comment because you might win because that's a pretty epic story right there. Uh, and Martin is saying, ladies, it's been a great broadcast uh, for anyone just starting. And um, that's amazing to hear, Martin. Thank you so much much always have backup plans great point all right so i'll be looking forward to your stories we'll be featuring the best ones we'll be reaching out to the winners with the prizes and on this bright note um yes i'll also add the studio setup list in the comments so if you want to find that and click uh on the links that we put together for you feel free to do that if you have a list just like that i know paul from linkedin mentioned that he built the one for his shopify team please feel free to also comment and share those because you know we, we can definitely benefit from learning from each other uh, but and other than that i think it's time for high five grace because okay it's a great stream. ready okay. Are you ready ah. oh no other way. The other, other way the other, other way. hand the other hand ready one two and three ah <laughs> boom awesome <laughs> that was so thanks fun. everyone yes the, the high five are super important and uh we we really appreciate you appreciate your questions have a great time remember that the gear is the least important thing that you need the most important is your message that's coming from your heart and your audience that's there to to get it and uh we will be back in a couple of weeks uh, there will be more live shows uh, coming up this week. Actually, I'm hosting a show with Pioneer DJ. So if you're a musician or a DJ, definitely tune in tomorrow as we'll be talking about how to live stream DJ sets and music. And uh, also on Cyber Monday, we will have a co-marketing stream with Elgato. So a lot more conversation about gear in the context of that specific brand. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for all your questions. Thanks for being part of the Restream family. We love you and cheers. Bye, everyone.